Okay, we were just talking about the solar system and how orbits are elliptical. Now let's actually do a quick little overview of our solar system. So from, um, starting from the sun, the closest to the sun, is the planet Mercury. So this is actually a picture of Mercury. It's a rocky, desolate place. It's very, very hot. There's not really any atmosphere. And in fact, uh, there's a NASA satellite going around it right now. It's called MESSENGER. So it's currently orbiting Mercury and taking lots of pictures so that we can find out lots of things about it. Now, I like this picture right here. It's been nicknamed Mickey Mouse. I think you can see the reason. So this is a close-up of the surface of Mercury. You can see all these holes. Now, of course, the surface of Mercury is a hard, rocky stuff. There's lots of dust on the top. And you can see it's been impacted by lots of things. And these are different objects that have sort of slammed into the surface of Mercury and made these impact craters. And you can see that, you know, there's a big one here, and then there's a little one here, and a little one here. And you can see since then there's been other ones, like here, for example, and here. Now, these are things like uh, maybe asteroids or comets or other objects, or just rocky chunks that were in orbit around the Sun and then ended up just running into Mercury and slamming into it. Now next out after Mercury is Venus. Now this is a uh, rocky planet but it has an atmosphere so it has uh, lots of stuff outside there. The problem is it's extremely hot and it's uh, not a very nice atmosphere. We don't think there could be life, at least not easy for life. And um, now, just to go back on Mercury, we haven't had things land on Mercury yet, but we have, or we, humans, have had things land on Venus. I don't know if you knew this, but the Russians sent a bunch of ones uh, onto Venus. They're actually called Venera, and here's an actual picture of the surface of Venus. Now, when these Russian landers landed on it, of course, sometimes their cameras weren't really pointed the right way, and they actually didn't send in uh, signals for very long due to all sorts of reasons, but trust me, this is not a nice place for humans, at least. We certainly would not survive there uh, very long because there's extremely high pressure, the temperatures are crazy hot, um, there's a lot of you know really bad things for you uh, in the atmosphere there. So we wouldn't be very happy on Venus, at least. But uh, I think it's pretty neat, though, just to take a look at uh, the surface of Venus. So we can say, um, well, if we do the next one here, oops, we're going to go to Venus here. There it is. This is actually a composite. Uh, so this guy named Don Mitchell, he put together some of the uh, Russian pictures uh, to put this together, to stitch them together, to sort of make a panorama. So you can see this is what the surface of Venus looks like. Now the weird thing is, it doesn't have many craters on it, which means somehow, for some reason, the surface has to have sort of redone itself. So it's kind of neat, actually, that Venus is, uh, well, it's rocky, first of all, but it doesn't have a very nice atmosphere for us, at least. Uh, some people have likened it to something like the greenhouse effect gone crazy, you know, because it's so incredibly hot on the surface of Venus. Now after Venus comes the Earth. I'm not going to talk much about that, because that's where we live. But around the Earth, of course, we have our moon. And this one we have sent people. In fact, people were walking around on it in the 60s and early 70s. So uh, these are people, you know, they've got their little uh, rover here. And there were some missions, they were called Apollo. So Apollo um, 11, I think, was the first one to actually uh, go on the surface of the moon uh, successfully. And that was uh, 1969. And of course, uh, they had a bunch of missions after that, but uh, they stopped in the early 70s. I think it was in 73. And they haven't been there since, not humans at least. But uh, hopefully we go back to the moon as humans. I think it could be really interesting. But of course, after the moon comes Mars. Now, this right here is a picture uh, taken on the surface of Mars. This is actually a crater. Now, uh, lots of different rovers and landers have actually gone to Mars. Uh, a lot of them have tried, and not many of them have actually been successful. But uh, some of the American ones that were successful, there was things like uh, Viking in the 70s, and then there was, um, more recently, there was Opportunity and... Um, uh, well, there was there was a whole bunch of them actually, but um, turns out there were some uh, rovers um, in the late 90s as well as early 2000s. There were things uh, roving around on the surface. Um, there was also one called Phoenix. That one actually didn't drive around very much. Well, it couldn't drive around at all actually. It was just fixed in place. But more recently, there's been one called um, the Mars Science Laboratory, uh, otherwise known as Curiosity. And that one actually landed on Mars just recently. 
at least uh, when I'm filming this, which is in 2012. Um, so in August, um, this new rover landed on the surface of Mars, and it was awesome how they actually got it there, because uh, I think it's really, really amazing how they even got this thing to land there. But um, this thing landed there, it's called Curiosity for short. But uh, you can see that um, you know humans have actually sent rovers to Mars, so they've sent little robots driving around. And it's this nice picture here. So um, yes, there is still the sun when you're on Mars. Of course you can still see it. Um, so that's actually pretty nice to see. I think it looks really pretty. And I think it's nice to see these pictures on the surface of these places, because it reminds you that they're places too. You know, they're not just, you know, pictures or round disks or circles, you know, that we see from Earth. They're also, you know, these places where you can send rovers or even where we might walk around one day. Now after Mars comes Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is one of these big gas giants. So this one here is gigantic, and it's got this big red you know, storm that actually swirls around on it, and it's got lots and lots of moons. And in fact, one of Jupiter's interesting moons is called Europa. So this one right here is thought to have a liquid ocean underneath a solid crust of ice. So it's thought that if there is life on other planets, maybe it could be on uh, Ju uh, Jupiter's moon, Europa. Now, of course, uh, it would be really neat to see if you could, you know, build a little uh, lander that could actually land on Europa. And I've seen some plans that uh, NASA's been toying with, as well as some other agencies, where they would actually take some sort of lander, maybe land it on the ice, and it would get really hot and heat itself, so that way it would melt through the ice. Now, the problem is it's difficult to know exactly how deep the ice is. You know, if it's only a few kilometers or a few hundred kilometers, it makes a pretty big difference. But uh, we have some pretty solid evidence uh, to say that there is some liquid H2O, in other words, liquid water underneath the ice, which means perhaps um, there could be life there. Um, at least it certainly would be interesting to go and have something underneath and go see if, you know, any little critters come in front of a camera, you know, of a rover or some sort of robot that actually goes underneath. So I think that's really cool. But uh, anyway, that's one of Jupiter's moons called Europa has some other really interesting ones. One is called Io, and that one, well, other than being funny because it only has two letters, it's actually really funny because, uh, or at least really interesting, because it's actually very volcanically active. So there's actually lots of volcanoes that are erupting on it currently. Now after uh, Europa, well, let's go to the next planet, which is Saturn. This is another gas giant and has these rings around it. These rings are made of really, really small little particles, and they're all in orbits. So, of course, because they're all stuck in an orbit, then they actually they make these really pretty designs. And in fact, um, the places where there's spaces in between the rings, uh, now we think we know why. It turns out that there's some uh, moons that are actually sort of clearing the area here. In other words, it um, either actually you know scoops up a lot of the material, so it sort of you know sucks it all up and and you know makes it part of itself, or it turns out there's some things about um, the different resonances, which is a little bit complicated, but resonances of different moons might actually clear out a ring or an area. But I think it's really interesting to see these rings. And of course Saturn has a bunch of moons. One of the interesting ones is its biggest uh, one called Titan. Now, the reason why I think it's really interesting is it is another place where humans have sent a robot. It turns out there was a mission, well it's still around, it's called Cassini, and uh, that was a European Space Agency mission. And they actually had a little lander that was designed to land on Titan. Now Titan has its own atmosphere, and it turns out it has its own um, whole cycle. In other words, it's got, uh, well, instead of having water though, it's not liquid water, it's thought to be liquid methane, which is maybe not very nice to uh, swim in. But it uh, turns out we think it has a methane cycle, which means it has lakes and, you know, large areas of methane liquid, and that means then that that stuff can actually go up into the atmosphere, there's clouds, it can rain again, so there's this sort of, this whole methane cycle, just like we have a water cycle on Earth. So when um, this probe landed on Titan, it actually took one picture on the surface. Well, actually a couple, but this is one of the better ones here. Uh, so you can see what the surface of Titan looked like. So they weren't sure if it was going to land in water or on the ground, so I heard that uh, it was made to float as well. But of course it would be very weird to float in uh, methane, but uh, that's how it could be. So that's Titan. Now, of course, the next planet out, it's another gas giant, and it's called Uranus, or Uranus. 
That one is interesting because its orbit is tipped uh, on its side. Well, its, its axis of rotation is tipped. In other words, where all the other planets, you know, if this is the sun, uh, and this here is all the other planets going around, they all tend to sort of rotate somewhat like, uh, you know, as if, as if, you know, it's, uh, you know, rotating around like this, or maybe, you know, rotating around, you know. So they all sort of rotate in similar ways. But for some reason, this particular planet, it's tipped on its side. So if we imagine, like, uh, you know, you could draw a stick through a planet, you know, and sort of rotate the planet around that stick, like a sort of barbecue thing, you know, if you sort of rotate it like a shish kebab, um, all the other planets tend to do that. So you could draw a stick, and then the, you know, planets would rotate around and rotate around. For some reason, Uranus has something like this. It's sort of tipped on its side, which means it rotates, you know, sort of like this, instead of, you know, around like the other ones do. So it's thought that maybe it was hit by something really big that sort of knocked it on its side. In other words, you know, the, the stick that you could sort of draw through it would be something like this. So in other words, it sort of rotates, you know, like this. So I'm not sure which way it goes, if it goes sort of top to bottom or bottom to top in this particular picture, but it sort of it rotates like this. Whereas all the other planets are all lined up like this, you know, with the sort of the stick, you know, so they sort of rotate around like that. So that's an interesting one with Uranus. And... Um, there's another picture right here. This is taken from an Earth-based telescope called Keck. And you can see some of these big storms on the surface. Now what they've done is um, they've done these, these uh, rings that it has are not actually this bright. They've just really highlighted the contrast just so you can see them. But it actually has some very, very faint rings. Because, of course, when you take pictures, you can sort of highlight things to make them stand out. And of course, then we have Neptune. That's the last of the uh, main planets. It's another gas giant. It also has really crazy winds uh, on it. But anyway, this is the sort of the, the end of the tour of our main parts of our solar system. So after this, in the next video, we're going to talk about things like uh, asteroids and comets.